Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the language and the words we use every day. If that's the kind of thing you're into, please subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends, and if you feel like you learned something today, leave it a like. Originally, this video was going to be a joke. I wasn't even going to really make this video. But the more I think about it, the more I think the definition of this word has actually changed or could change in the future based on its current usage. I'll explain why I think that in a bit, but for now, remember that it's the job of a lexicographer to describe how language is used, not how it's supposed to be used. So let's just jump right into it. Nazi. Noun. Someone who does not believe that political authority for Europe or the globe should be centralized in powerful nations like Germany. Historical. A member of the National Socialist German Workers' Party. People have always been mean all throughout history, and things haven't changed very much. People have always tried to come up with terms to deride and insult people, like bumpkin or hillbilly, meaning things like unrefined or clumsy. And the Germans of the early 20th century were no different. There was such a term used in Germany to insult people who seemed like backwater farmers or peasants primarily from Bavaria. It was a mispronounced version of a common Bavarian name, Ignatius or Ignatz. This word was Nazi. It generally meant clumsy or stupid person, even before the existence of the National Socialist German Workers' Party. This word had already gone through a redefining in history before it even came to mean what people think it means now. In the 1920s, the opposition to the National Socialist German Workers' Party wanted a derogatory term to refer to their opposition. That's when they took the German abbreviation for socialism, Sozi, and replaced the first half with Na from the word national in the party's name. And it fit perfectly with the already existing insult. Thus was born what people now think the definition of of the word Nazi is. The name Nazi never really caught on in Germany to describe the party, but those who had escaped from that terrible regime sure spread the word far and wide, where we got the words Nazi regime and the Nazi party was from the people that escaped. And it, this word was reintroduced back into Germany after World War II. But things are always changing, and this is where my new definition comes from. Prescription and commentary. I hear a lot about people being called Nazi. I myself have been called a Nazi. And I think most people that are using the word probably have the common definition of the word Nazi in mind when they're using it. But what they mean and what's true can sometimes be different. And what this change comes down to is the anarchic way that language comes into being and changes over time. What I'm about to explain might make a little bit more sense if we look at another word and its history first. Let's take silly for instance. In English, the word silly used to mean holy or innocent. Silly gained its current definition because people were using it to refer to others who were either ignorant of the ways of the world or did stupid things because they didn't understand. And over time, as children heard the word more and more often referring to people who didn't understand things or seemed stupid, what became the on only meaning of the word was silly or st stupid person, silly, the word we have today. I think we currently have a similar situation happening with the word Nazi. The recent boom in the use of the word Nazi I think is causing a change in the definition. Certain political groups are using the word to associate their opponents with the ra racist and megalomaniacal beliefs of the National Socialist German Workers' Party. And in some instances, this comparison may be accurate, but most of the time, it seems to miss the mark and is merely applied to people that these groups disagree with as a means to deride them. This is where the new definition is coming in. 
I was trying to think about what the people who are being called Nazis have in common. It's certainly not racism, anti-Semitism, or homophobia, because people like Ben Shapiro, a purebred Jew, and Milo Yiannopoulos, a gay married man, who's married to a black man, are all being called Nazis. So, what is the thing that all these people have in common? What ties all these quote-unquote Nazis together? What kick-started this in my brain and what made me realize what it was was when a group of Brexiteers were shouting at Anna Sobury, calling her a Nazi at the beginning of Count Dankula's video, I'm about to say the N-word. Is we have to be absolutely, I do object to being called a Nazi, actually. Right, um, well, apologies Sorry, to you I, if I, you're I, offended by And I immediately realized what the definition of the word Nazi is going to be if it continues to be used the way it is. When the British government starts looking into making calling a government official a Nazi a hate crime, they're telling us who the word should be applied to and who it shouldn't be applied to. They're already operating on my new definition. Here it is. If you believe the EU, which is primarily controlled by Germany, should control sovereign countries, you are not a Nazi by their definition. But if you think countries should maintain their sovereignty... You are a Nazi, and it's acceptable to call you that. This is already becoming an accepted definition of the word, even though people may not realize what it is. Even in the United States, the word Nazi is applied primarily to those who want to lessen the control of the government, lessen the centralized control of the government over the states and themselves. If this definition sticks, people like Donald Trump, George Washington, and even myself will fit the definition of a Nazi, at least the new definition. And I really don't like this word, and I don't want it to become truly conflated with the ideas of sovereignty over oneself or one's own nation. But if it keeps going and getting used over and over in the manner that it is now, this will become the new definition of the word. And that's a future I don't want to see. Thank you for watching. If you feel like you've learned something or if you like what I had to say, please leave a like. And feel free to share it with your friends. I'm sure they'd find this interesting as well. And if you're generous enough to support my project here, turns out Subscribestar has started taking payments again. So feel free to visit there or go to lexikechographer.com support. All the links are down below. I look forward to seeing you next time, and until then, keep on learning.